hello everyone in this session we will discuss the transfer function of the second order system how it behaves for zeta equal 1 what is zeta here you know that zeta is damping ratio damping ratio will decides how the second order system behaves so here for the second order system you know that the characteristic equation equal s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square is equals to 0. Here substituting zeta equal to 1 in the above equation the equation will be s square 2 omega n s plus omega n square is equals to 0. This equation is look like a, a square plus 2ab plus b square. So nothing but that is a plus b whole square. So I can write s plus omega n s plus omega n whole square will be equals to the 0. So we can write we this is a second order system that's why you have two poles the first pole equal s equal minus 1 the other pole s equal minus 1 we have the two poles here from these poles you can find out time constant what is time constant time constant 1 by minus of the real real part so minus 1 by what is real part minus omega n so this is become 1 by omega n right so there is no negative part that's why time constant represents with tau that's why there is no damping frequency there is no damping frequency that means represents with omega d that will be zero there is no damping frequency means there is no oscillations there is no oscillations means so directly you can write doesn't consisting of the no oscillations here so this system the system which consisting so go for draw the s plane so take it as it is a s plane in this s plane you have two poles this is the one pole and this is one the another pole both poles are at the minus omega n okay so whichever the poles is like this the output waveform the c of t is the output waveform is look like this the output waveform critically damped output waveform is it will reach the point and again it will decrease like this so whenever zeta equal omega n means that system is called critically damped system zeta equal to 1 consisting of system is called critically damped system critically or critical damped system so this is for the zeta equal 1 for zeta equal to 1 it consisting of the minus omega n two times and waveform is like this waveform is like this next next we will look at the if zeta is greater than 1 so whenever zeta is greater than 1 the poles value s value is we have the two poles the po we will get finally poles is like this zeta omega n plus or minus omega n root of zeta square minus 1 what is this meaning it doesn't have any imaginary parts any imaginary terms but in case of g 0 less than zeta less than 1 we have an imaginary parts there but here we don't have any imaginary parts so that means you have two poles the first pole is 
minus zeta omega n plus omega n into root of zeta square minus 1 and the second pole s2 equal minus zeta omega n minus omega n into root of zeta square minus 1 so we can write these two poles like this so if you take the s plane I'm drawing the S plane here. So in this S plane, it is we have two poles, two poles and negative. Just take it as this is the A S1 pole we have an S2 pole like this. So maybe S1 pole positive pole is here and S2 pole is somewhere here. Okay. Both are the both are the in negative real axis this is the negative real axis so this is the positive real axis this is positive imaginary axis this is the negative imaginary axis these poles are arranged like this because this is the plus means it is nearer to the imaginary axis this minus means it is far away for the imaginary axis so we have look at the s1 here S1 is the pole which is nearer to the imaginary axis is called as the dominant pole. We can write here the pole which is nearer to imaginary axis is called dominant pole is called dominant pole it will dominant in the two poles the dominant pole is the s1 look at here this s1 is the dominant pole what is the importance of this dominant pole this dominant pole will give only the time constant because we have two values we don't know which has to take so for that purpose the time constant we will find out for this condition the time constant value is tau equal tau value equal you know the minus 1 by minus zeta omega n plus omega n root of zeta square minus 1 zeta square minus 1 so we can common in both the minus we can common both the minus finally we will get 1 by zeta omega n minus omega n if forgot here zeta square minus 1 you can take zeta square minus 1 right zeta square minus 1 so this is the time constant for zeta is greater than 1 Poles arrangement is like this S1 and S2. Okay. So, what is the output waveform for this? The output waveform C of T is like this. The output waveform initially it starts from here. For example, this is the required output. It will reach initially and it will downfall like this. It will downfall like this. So this is the output waveform. Okay. So look at here. Whenever zeta is greater than one, we have two poles. Both are in uh, available in negative real axis like this S1 and S2. The pole arrangement is like this in the negative real axis. The time constant equal. The time constant value is the for to find out the time constant we have pole which is nearer to the negative real axis is called the dominant pole by using dominant pole we will find out the time constant the time constant value is like this so from here we can give some conclusions for different different data values 
so we are dealing with zeta values up to now so for second order system for second order system zeta value is very important here so if the zeta equal to 0 the system is called undamped system undamped system if zeta is less than zeta is less than 1 is called underdamped system underdamped system if zeta equal to 1 it is called critically damped system damping means removing the oscillation next if zeta is greater than 1 zeta is greater than 1 that system is called over damped system so by doing different dealing with different different zeta values we are getting the different different systems we have we have the different different systems are available okay these are the conclusions and if you observe we already deal with different different zeta values so once we look at the the pole formation here just observe this diagram this are this diagram is imaginary axis so this is this called the real axis this is the positive real axis and this is the negative real axis and this is called the negative imaginary axis right so look at here for, for zeta equal 0 just observe here this will give zeta equal 0 this is the one pole and this is the other pole for zeta equal to 0 and 0 less than zeta less than 1 the poles are look like here so this is zeta omega again minus plus j omega this is the one pole 0 less than zeta less than 1 this is the other pole 0 less than zeta less than 1 these two poles for zeta is exactly 1 we have two poles these are the four this gives the zeta equal 1 if zeta is greater than 1 we have two poles this is the one pole zeta is greater than 1 and another pole is zeta is greater than 1 so these are the pole formation for different different values so by observing these analysis wherever zeta value is less than 0 the system is called unstable system so for which have the negative real axis those are the unstable system wherever the zeta is greater than or equal 0 in the, we have two conditions which has the 0 it, it consists it cause marginally stable which has greater than 0 it is a stable system okay this is about for different different zeta values the behavior of the second order system i hope all of you enjoy the session and understand the session thank you